this is the Rossum Electro Morpheus Stereo Morphing Z Plane Filter. It's a very interesting digital filter that presents the idea of filtering as a cube. Basically, each corner of the cube has different frequency responses or filter configurations, and then you get to move in between those corners. You get to move in the so called frequency dimension. I'll go ahead and turn this down for a moment. You can see that little cursor across there move up in the Y direction. You get to move in the so-called morph dimension, which is the X direction. And then depending on the patch, you either get to increase distortion, or move in the transform dimension, which is the Z direction, back and forth in the cube. Each of those three coordinates has a control voltage input with an inverting attenuator, as well as an initial amount knob. And you'll notice that they are marked as having a minus five to plus five volt range. If you have controllers that fit in that range, which I do, my FH1 gives me zero to 10 volts out of my mod wheel, and minus five to plus five volts out of my slider controls, these will map quite naturally onto these control voltage inputs. Many other MIDI to CV converters do output a 10 volt or five volt range, so those also map very nicely onto these controls. If you need any adjustments, you always have these attenuverters. You'll also notice that the frequency has a full level input. I'm using it as an extra patch input so I can have both an envelope and my mod wheel coming in at the same time. But the full level input is also very good to patch a one volt proactive signal into so that the filter tracks your keyboard. The Morpheus comes with hundreds of presets. I've been using a filter sequence to quickly switch between presets that I've chosen. I can also hold the filter sequence button to turn that off and then directly change presets using the data encoder. I can pre-select a name that sounds interesting, such as Ohm Blow Pass Plus, press encoder, and I'll change to that response. Also, if you press the encoder down while rotating it, it will automatically change in between those different presets. The reason that you're hearing the filter go momentarily bright in between those changes is because first it must crossfade to what's called a null filter, which just passes through the signal uninterrupted. That's up at filter setting number 999. And then it crossfades to the filter you're changing to. The Morpheus is a stereo filter, and indeed is very well suited for putting stereo program material through it. I think of this as an equalizer as much as I do as a voltage controlled filter to use in a patch. It's something that I can alter my entire patch setup with. Normally, the left and right channels are separate, but occasionally if you pick something that has a resonant attack, just the tick from the envelope can set the filter ringing. I'm going to go back to my sequence. You'll see that Rawson provides many different preset sequences for you, including grouping different filters. Let's go ahead and go up to my last filter. Let's turn up the envelope amount. And this has a particularly nice tick on the attack. You'll notice on the stereo level meters that show the input, internal distortion, and output levels that the right channel is kicking some output even though I don't have anything plugged into my right channel input. Well, we can listen to that right output in isolation. And you can hear just the little tick attack of the filter ringing for me hitting it with a very fast attack envelope. That's another way to add some more character to your sound. Let's turn this back down. Go back to my normal output and stop the arpeggio. So that shows the Morpheus in a normal patch context after the VCO, before the VCA. However, it really shines when you use it as an equalization, effect, or other sort of drone treatment after your entire patch. And that's what I'm gonna focus on in the next movie.